In this video, you will prepare an adjusted trial balance as well as closing entries. After a company has journalized and posted all adjusting entries, it prepares another trial balance called an adjusted trial balance, which shows the balances of all accounts, including those adjusted at the end of the accounting period. The purpose of an adjusted trial balance is to prove that the total debits equal the total credits. Because the accounts contain all data needed for financial statements, the adjusted trial balance can be used to prepare financial statements. This is the adjusted trial balance for Sierra Corporation. The amounts affected by the adjusting entries are highlighted in red. Companies can prepare financial statements, more specifically the income statement, the retained earnings statement, and the balance sheet directly from an adjusted trial balance. This slide shows the relationships between the data in the adjusted trial balance and the corresponding financial statements. Companies prepare the income statement from the revenue and expense accounts. They prepare the retained earnings statement from the retained earnings account, the dividend account, and the net income or net loss shown in the income statement. Companies can prepare the balance sheet from the asset, liability, and stockholders' equity accounts. They obtain the amount reported for retained earnings on the balance sheet from the ending balance in the retained earnings statement. At the end of the accounting period, the company makes the accounts ready for the next accounting period by journalizing and posting closing entries. In previous chapters, you learned that revenue, expense, and dividend accounts are subdivisions of retained earnings, which is reported in the stockholders' equity section of the balance sheet. Because revenues, expenses, and dividends relate only to a given accounting period, they are considered temporary accounts. In contrast, all balance sheet accounts are considered permanent accounts because their balances are carried forward into the future accounting periods. At the end of the accounting period, companies transfer the temporary account balances to retained earnings through the closing entries. Closing entries transfer net income or net loss as well as dividends to the retained earnings account. Closing entries produce a zero balance in each temporary account, so these accounts are ready to accumulate data about revenues, expenses, and dividends in the next accounting period. Closing entries usually take place only at the end of a company's annual accounting period. This adjusted trial balance reports a zero balance in retained earnings. Prior to the closing entries, the balance in retained earnings is its beginning of the period balance. For Sierra Corporation, this is zero because it is the company's first month of operations. The retained earnings statement reports an ending balance of $2,360 at the end of October. Closing entries transfer net income or net loss and dividends to the retained earnings account so that the balance agrees with the retained earnings statement. When companies prepare closing entries, they could close each income statement account directly to retained earnings. However, to do so would result in excessive detail in the retained earnings account. Instead, companies close the revenue and expense accounts to another temporary account called income summary. The balance in the income summary is the net income or net loss for the accounting period. Income summary is then closed, which transfers the net income or net loss from this temporary account to retained earnings. Companies close the dividend account directly to retained earnings. Let's first focus on the accounts we need to close. Draw a line below retained earnings. The accounts below the line are temporary accounts you will need to close out these accounts, in essence, make them zero. 
all of the accounts above the red line are permanent accounts. Their balances are carried forward into the next accounting period. If you have cash of $15,200 on October 31st, you have the same amount of cash on November 1st. Likewise, if you owe the bank $5,000 on October 31st, you still owe the bank that same amount on November 1st. The first closing entry will close revenue into the temporary account income summary. So we debit service revenue and credit income summary for $10,600. The second closing entry will close expenses into the temporary account income summary. So we debit income summary for the total of all the expenses and we credit each individual expense account. The balance in the income summary account is net income, which is the difference between revenue and expenses or $2,860. The third closing entry will debit income summary and credit retained earnings for the amount of net income or $2,860. The last entry will debit retained earnings and credit dividends for $500 to close dividends to retained earnings. After posting these entries, the balance in retained earnings is $2,360. This amount agrees with the amount reported on the retained earnings statement. This slide illustrates the closing entries. After you post these entries, the balance in retained earnings agrees with the retained earnings statement. According to the adjusted trial balance, retained earnings has a balance of zero. After posting these closing entries, the balance in retained earnings is $2,360, which agrees with the amount reported on the retained earnings statement. In this exercise, you will prepare the closing entries for Ryan Company. Focus on the accounts you need to close. Draw a line below retained earnings. The accounts below the line are temporary accounts, whereas the accounts above the red line are permanent accounts because their balances are carried forward into the next accounting period. The solutions to this exercise will be provided in another file. This slide shows the required steps in the accounting cycle. You can see that the cycle begins with the analysis of business transactions and ends with the preparation of a post-closing trial balance. Companies perform the steps in the cycle in sequence and repeat them in each accounting period. Steps 1 through 3 typically occur during the accounting period, whereas steps 4 through 7 are on a periodic basis, such as monthly, quarterly, or annually. Steps 8 and 9, closing entries and a post-closing trial balance, usually occur at the end of a company's annual accounting period. After a company journalizes and posts all closing entries, it prepares another trial balance called a post-closing trial balance. A post-closing trial balance is a list of all permanent accounts and their balances after closing entries are journalized and posted. Since all temporary accounts will have zero balances, the post-closing trial balance will contain only permanent balance sheet accounts.